Good morning. I welcome all of you to Sherwood Episcopal Church on this August 29th. I'm so happy that you are here with us in person, and I welcome those who are watching with us virtually. We are all one body, and we worship together as the body of Christ together, all at the table. Um, I welcome Dr. George Sack, who is our organist today, as Greg has, take, has taken a little liberty and vacation, well-deserved, and I welcome back Cassidy, who has been away, and we're so happy to have you back within our midst. So welcome, George, and welcome back, Cassidy. As is our tradition, we have a few announcements before we begin the service. Thank you to everyone who has been donating their towels to the animal program. They're in dire need of those and have been extremely overwhelmed and appreciative of all of the kind generosity of people who have been giving um, their old towels, gently, gently used towels and everything, um, blankets to the Humane Society. So thank you very, very much and continue to do so. Um, because the need is great. Also, if you will know, beginning today, we have made a slight change to our prayer list. We aren't taking names away, um, but we're trying to gain a greater understanding and organization of our prayers. And so everyone will, and anyone, can be on the prayer list, and typically that person will be on the prayer list that we read every Sunday for four weeks. And during that time, whomever put them on the prayer list um, will get a call from myself or Karen and also a member of our pastoral care team just to check in to see how things are going. And then after the four weeks, the name is, is removed or because they, everything is good and doing well, or there is may, a need for continued prayer. And we then will continue them to be on the extended prayer list and um, who have greater needs. So ongoing needs, as a matter of fact. So in other words, my daughter Lauren, who had, had gone through some medical issues and lasted for a long period of time, she could have been on the list for four weeks with her name being read publicly during, on Sunday, and then she would remain on the ongoing prayer list needs. So um, that's how we work, and we hope that all of you will then take home the bulletin or actually download it from our website at SherwoodCockeysville.org under worship and pray those names those who are on the current prayer list and, and needs right now, and those who are on the ongoing prayer list. Every day, just read their names. Nothing special. The rest is up to God. But prayers are so foundational to our faith, and they can truly, truly improve the lives of those who are feeling very concerned or scared or alone during their time of need. So please, I encourage all of us to do that. And then we will have hospitality following um, our service. Um, I encourage you to take some goodies, there's some delicious goodies in the wing, and take them outside and chat and be among your friends to catch up and to see how everyone is doing. And then lastly, but most importantly, is our formation program. We have an adult, an adult formation program and our youth formation program. And there are some really good opportunities to dive into, your, into the faith, into scripture, into other issues that I truly encourage you to take advantage of. Uh, everything will be on Zoom at this point, but if we can get a small group of all vaccinated people we would be willing to do that on a Wednesday, particularly for the Book of Esther. But we need to hear from you, um, and we need to make sure uh, that if you're interested, we will try to accommodate everybody as best as possible. Those who have the final, once we have the final list of that Bible study or, or the book study, Waking Up White, then that group will determine the best time to meet. Um, but initially, we are all meeting via Zoom because of the health concerns that we have. Um, and then the youth program also will be starting, and they will definitely be on Zoom. That has worked out extremely well with them. 
So I commend you to this. This is a year long, so there's lots to come. And I'm excited that we have this. And thanks to Karen, uh, our seminarian, who helped us put all this together. She will be leading the Book of Esther, which it will be a fascinating book study. And I'm looking forward to that myself. That's enough announcements, I believe. Let us take a few moments to settle our hearts and our minds, to open up ourselves to hearing God through the, the hymns that we will hear and through the prayers and through the scriptures that we will lift up to God. I'm thankful that you are all here with us. Thank you. Service begins on page one of our bulletin. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord of all power and might, the author and giver of all good things, graft in our hearts the love of your name, increase in us true religion, nourish us with all goodness, and bring forth in us the fruit of good works through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the first reading. The 
The first reading is from the book of James. Every generous act of giving with every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. In fulfillment of his own purpose, he gave us birth by the word of truth, so that we would become kind, fresh first fruits of his creatures. You must understand this, my beloved. Let everyone be quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to anger, for your anger does not produce God's righteousness. Therefore, rid yourself of all sordidness and rank growth of wickedness, and welcome with meekness the implanted word that has the power to save your souls. But the doers of the word, and not merely hearers, of, deceive themselves. For if any are hearers of the word and not doers, they are like those who look at themselves in a mirror. For they look at themselves and when going away, immediately forget what they look were like. But those who look into the perfect law, the law of liberty, and, and persevere, being not hearers, forget but doers who act, they will be blessed in their doing. If any think they are religious and do not bridle their tongues, but deceive their hearts, their religion is worthless. Religion is as pure and undefiled before God. The Father is in this, this, to care for orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself unstained by the word, the word of the Lord. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 45, verses 1 and 2 and 7 through 10. We will read responsibly by whole verse. My heart is stirring with a noble song. Let me recite what I have fashioned for the king. My tongue shall be the pen of a skilled writer. Your throne, O God, endures forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness and a scepter of your kingdom. You, you love righteousness and hate iniquity. All your garments are fragrant with myrrh, aloes, and cassia, and the music of the strings from ivy palaces make you glad. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Now when the Pharisees and some of the scribes who had come from Jerusalem gathered around Jesus, they noticed that some of his disciples were eating with defiled hands, that is, without washing them. For the Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat unless they thoroughly wash their hands, thus observing the tradition of the elders. And they do not eat anything from the market unless they wash it. And there are also many other traditions that they observe, the washing of cups and pots and bronze kettles. So the Pharisees and the scribes asked him, why do your disciples not live according to the tradition of the elders, but eat with defiled hands? He said to them, Isaiah prophesied rightly about you hypocrites, as it is written, This people honors me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching human precepts as doctrines. You abandon the commandment of God and hold to human tradition. Then he called the crowd again and said to them, Listen to me, all of you. And understand there is nothing outside a person that by going in can defile. But the things that come out are what defile. 
For it is from within, from the human heart, that evil intentions come. Fornication, theft, murder, adultery, avarice, wickedness, deceit, licentiousness, envy, slander, pride, folly. All these evil things come from within, and they defile a person. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord. Spirit, rain down upon us today. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Our readings this month have focused on miracles and feedings. There's been a lot of discussion this month about food. And today's reading doesn't far stray far from that theme. It centers around preparing for con- to consume food and the practices that the Pharisees have embraced. It has much to say about tradition and practices. You know, as I read today's gospel, I was reminded of my niece who loved McDonald's french fries. Not just any french fries. It had to be McDonald's french fries. And whenever we would take her to McDonald's to get fries, her cousins would gobble up their fries right away while she was sitting there patiently waiting. That aroma of French fries swirling through the car, but she waited. For she had been taught well by her parents that you need to wash your hands and say grace before you eat. And so she would wait until she got home to do that. But as we look at the Pharisees and the ritual of hand washing today, we must not confuse it with our present day understanding of cleanliness. You know, over the last 18 months, we've learned and heard a lot about hand washing and how it actually benefits us. And we've seen that. We've been taught exactly how we should wash our hands. But in the context of Mark's gospel, writing to to the first century Christians, they would have understood the ritual of hand washing quite differently. Hygiene was not the issue here, for it wasn't until the 17th century that germs were even discovered. The focus of the hand washing rituals are used by the Pharisees as a distraction. The the spiritual hand washing tradition is but one of of many Christian traditions. Theologian Jaro Pelican said, tradition is the faith of the dead. Traditionalism is the dead faith of the living. Let me repeat that, give you time to let that soak in. Tradition is the living faith of the dead. Traditionalism is the dead faith of the living. Pelican is referring to the dynamic Christian faith that endures from generation to generation. It is passed down. And all of us here today can imagine, can think about our own traditions, practices that have been passed down from grandmother to mother to child, from generation to generation. I was recently talking to someone about family traditions around food. And they shared with me that they always cut the stalk of their asparagus when they were preparing asparagus. And when asked by someone why she did this, she simply said, my mother did it. That's why I do it. How many of us have those types of traditions that we remember our family members doing certain things and we too pick up those same traditions? Now I want you to take just a second to think of a family tradition or spiritual practice that is important in your life. What is that tradition or practice? Why do you do what you do? Traditionalism is different from tradition. 
It is, as Pelican said, the dead faith of the living. In other words, we simply and mindlessly go through the motions of a spiritual practice and only assume a posture of faith. Let me see if I can give you an example with that as I share with you a story by Anthony DeMello, who was a priest. He wrote, when the guru sat down to worship each evening, the ashram cat would get in the way and distract the worshipers. So he instructed that the cat be tied during evening worship. After the guru died, the cat continued to be tied during evening worship. And when the cat died, another one was brought in so that the ashram could continue to tie the cat during evening worship. Centuries later, le learned, learned treaties were written by the guru's disciples. And they talked about the liturgical significance of tying up a cat, you got it, while worshiping in the evening. The story of the ashram cat is an example of traditionalism. There are times when we have moved so far away from the tradition, the original intent of a tradition, that we really don't know why we do what we do. This was what Jesus was referring to when he called the Pharisees hypocrites. In their case, the Pharisees had, a, had maybe, um, had taken a ritual that was intended for priests as they conducted sacred tasks in sacred places. And they had expanded that practice to the entire Jewish population. It's like what Mother Nancy does on the altar when the acolyte pours water over her hands. It is a sacred tradition. But when Mother Nancy cleanses her hands with the disinfectant, that's about cleanliness. Now, maybe in the beginning, the Pharisees' intent was, in fact, to show love and devotion to God. Oh, but over time, the practice of ritual hand washing became a marker to identify who they were and also to call out their pagan neighbors. So their question to Jesus about why the, some of the disciples did not wash their hands before they ate was really a question to indict Jesus. For the Pharisees knew that Jesus, being a Jew, knew both the tradition of the elders and the laws of the Torah regarding hand washing and spiritual cleansing. They asked Jesus, why weren't the disciples following the tradition? But Jesus would not be pulled into their scheme. Instead, he pivots and calls out their hypocrisy. Jesus is clear that in order to protect us from becoming hypocrites ourselves, we need to remember that at the core of our tradition should be our hearts. He quotes Isaiah saying, this people honors me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. But in vain they worship me, teaching as doctrine the commandments of men. Now, Jesus does not condemn tradition, all traditions, but Jesus does condemn the elevation of human tradition and practices to a sacred status. As the church, we have a responsibility to preserve tradition, but we must be careful that we don't equate our human practices with the core meaning of the tradition itself such as the example of the ashram cat. If in doubt about your spiritual practices, ask yourself, where is my heart in this practice? We must look carefully and ask, is this practice, is this tradition to show devotion to God? Or is it an example, or is it an example of God's love? And does it show love for others, or is it used to show up others? In order to keep true to the tradition, we must guard our hearts. We must guard them against those evil intentions 
that Jesus spells out in today's gospel. You know, if you ever want to know the, or have a preview of what the gospel mess, what the message is for the Sunday worship service through the liturgical readings, all you need to do is pay close attention to the collect. Today's collect says, Lord of all power and might, the author and giver of all good things. Graft in where? Our hearts. Graft in our hearts the love of your name. Increase in us true religion. Nourish us with all goodness. And bring forth in us the fruit of good works through Jesus Christ our Lord. In the epistle reading, James reminds us that we should be doers of the word and not merely hearers. And I'm here to tell you today, Sherwood, that your leaders have heard that message of love and action. They are clear about how we have to have a love of creation and love of neighbor. It is at the center of their response, their action to a decades old problem of when it rains, the runoff from this property. A problem of excessive runoff that contributes to the pollution of the city and the county's water source, and it is a danger to the surrounding community. No longer are Sherwood's leaders willing to kick the can down the road for someone else to solve their problem. They are looking to care for God's creation and natural resources as a component of the remedy to this problem. This decision by your leaders is centered around the understanding that all of us are stewards of God's creation, including the earth, and that each of us has a responsibility, a role to play in loving our neighbors. Future generations will know the spiritual practice of creation care as exemplified by the actions of this community. Now, over the next few months, you're going to learn more and more about their plans and about the response to the problem. As Sherwood leaves, a legacy of love of neighbor and love of creation to be passed down from generation to generation. But for now, as we begin a new church year, let us look closely at our spiritual practices, our traditions. Do we particip do you participate in the book studies that are coming about, or do you or do you will you participate in any of the adult formation courses that are going to be offered? Are you praying for those on the prayer list on a daily basis as well as on Sunday morning? Are you willing to pray regularly the prayer for conservation of natural resources that you can find on page eight twenty seven? of the Book of Common Prayer. Are you willing to pray that prayer on a regular basis as Sherwood undertakes resolving the water problem? Take this time over the next few months as we begin, or next few weeks as we begin this new church year and discern if your practices are truly tradition or have you been caught in a season of traditionalism? Amen. And now, let us stand as we are able to recite the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, Father of all, maker of heaven and earth, all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. 
On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God. We believe the Lord, the giver of life, with the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. prayers of the people. With all our heart and with all our mind, let us pray for the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above, for the loving kindness of God, and for the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, For the peace of the world, for the welfare of the Holy Church of God, and for the unity of all peoples, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, For our bishop, and for all the clergy and people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have for our president, for the leaders of the nations, and for all in authority, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have for this town of Cockeysville, for every city and community, and for those who live in them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have for the good earth which comes from given us, and for the wisdom and will to conserve it, let us pray to the Lord. Lord the aged and infirm, for the widowed and orphans, and for the sick and the suffering, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. We especially pray for those impacted by COVID-19, as well as those of our parish prayer list. Sandy and Jack, Virginia, Timothy, Margaret S. and family, Jackie and Rick, Lois, Louis, Louis David D., Caitlin, Alice, Shannon T., Marissa, Debbie, or Tom T, Bill and his family, Casey, Ron L, Ron S, Nicholas, Dante, and those in harm with way, Hurricane Ida, let us pray to the Lord. For the poor and the oppressed, for the unemployed and the destitute, for prisoners and captives, for all who remember and care for them, let us pray to the Lord. The blessings of this life, especially for those celebrating birthdays as well as anniversaries, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for all who have died in the hope of the resurrection and for the departed, remember and give thanks for the life of Jackie, cousin of Carrie Fowler. We also remember the pray for the victims of Kabul airport terrorist attack and their families and friends. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord for deliverance from all danger violence, oppression, and degradation, let us pray to the Lord, Lord have that we may end our lives in faith and hope, without suffering and without reproach, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have in the communion of all the saints, let us com- commend ourselves to one another and all to our life to Christ our God. Lord, hear the prayers of your people, and what we have asked faithfully, grant that we may obtain effectually to the glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, Have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sin through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. 
and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. My sisters and brothers, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us greet one another with a sign of peace to those here and to those who are joining us virtually. love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and grace. it is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. For you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, 
out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray, you gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us in your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to this, that heavenly country where with all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, the for, firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, the author of salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. We have not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. The gifts of God for the people of God.
prayer found on the bottom of page 13 of your bulletin. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory now and forever. Amen. Go forth into the world in peace. Be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted, support the weak, help the afflicted, honor everyone, love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. As we go forth into the world refreshed and renewed, we reaffirm our commitment to our mission as a congregation, saying together, God commands us to enthusiastically cast open our doors to embrace all, impacting lives through bold service, no exceptions. And now, my friends, let us go forth to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Oh, <laughs> my